says, and he answered, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, he responded, Jesus responded back to the lawyer, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. Now listen, um, what was happening, there's this conversation that's going on, and, and this lawyer was asking Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus says, how read you the the scripture how do you read it and he answered this back to him he echoed this back to him and Jesus said you've answered correctly do this and you will live Zao is the word there and it literally means you will be blessed you will have true life Zao you will have true life if you do that and, and what I believe is that most believers are just attending church and hanging out with God, but not going to this level. James chapter 4, and this, this gives you the root of why we don't do this. James chapter 4 verse 6, it says, he gives more grace. Everybody say more. More. Mm. I can use more grace. He gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God, what's that word? Oh, that hurts, y'all. God opposes the proud, but gives grace or more grace to the humble, right? God opposes the proud. He resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. Lord, thank you for your word today. Ask that you would just ignite something in our spirit. Father, let the light bulb come on. Let, let the switch flip in our hearts today. God, take us to another level in you, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated today. The scripture says, God opposes or resists the proud. And listen, I believe when we're talking about, uh, we're talking about the soul. Love, we've already talked about love the Lord your God with all of your heart. But now we're talking about love the Lord your God with all of your soul. And We've defined the soul as the will of man, as the decision-making mechanism inside of man, and uh, that independence of man, if you will. And here's, here's a statement for you. I believe most Christians are happy to accept forgiveness, but reluctant to, to give their surrender. Happy to accept forgiveness but reluctant to surrender, submit, or relinquish control of our lives. We like what we like, we want what we want, and we believe that we know best. Come on now, y'all know it's true. You know it's true. We think we always know best. We are convinced, listen, I know we live in America, Marca. We are convinced that we have rights. Paul writes in the scripture, he says, you are bought with a price. Oh, come on now. You are bought, you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. You are not your own. I don't belong to me anymore. I belong to him. When I said yes to Jesus, I said no to my old life and yes to his life. I no longer belong to me. Listen, I, we talk about loving the Lord God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. I, I, can, you, can you do a little exercise with me? The scripture says that we are to love the Lord, our God, with all of our hearts. To love the Lord, our God, with all of our 
soul to love that y'all aren't y'all aren't getting it yet to love the Lord our God with all of our mind to love the Lord our God with all of our strength I, I, I need you to get that I, I need you to, to to just grasp that for a minute God has left our heart our soul our mind our strength in our control mm. he said to love me with all it's a decision that we have to make to love God with all of the heart that belongs to us oh come on now and to love the Lord our God with all of the soul that belongs to us he has left it in our control today I'm going to talk to you Lord willing about three kings in the Bible the first king obviously today that I want to talk to you about is Jesus King Jesus and Jesus made this statement he said, why won't you do what I say? He's the king, right? Why won't you do what I say? And we've read this passage last time we talked on this. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. Let me pause there for just a second. Um, I, I, when I'm talking to you about surrendering our soul to God, surrendering our will and being obedient to God and following his way instead of our way, when I talk about loving God with all of our soul, that is assuming, that is taking the assumption that you know what God wants you to do. Because when I know what God wants me to do, then I make the decision whether or not to do it his way or my way. Right? And so uh, it, it's, it's that making the decision with my soul to love him. Not, not, wait, 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 wait. Not just tell him I love him with lip service, but to actually love him with my obedience. Come on now. Ow! He says, you hear my words, the man that hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when a flood arose and the stream broke against that house, it could not shake it because it had a had been well built. Verse 49 said, but the one who hears and does not do. The, listen, I, I've been doing this a long, long, long time. And, and I'll tell you, I'm, I, it, it just boggles my mind at everybody that wants to attend church and call him Lord and keep living their own life. Keep making our own decisions the way we want to do things. We want his life and our life. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the stream broke against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Listen, that the, the, the first analogy he says, I'll, I'll show you what it's like when a man, he builds his house on a firm foundation. He said, if you'll do what I tell you to do, if you'll follow my lead, if you'll surrender your choices to me, and listen, that's the, that's the whole crux of what I want to get across to you today, is the validity of us taking the next step in the discipleship journey of Following after Jesus is to love him with all of our soul by surrendering our decisions to what he says. 
And he said, if you will do that, if you will do what I say, I will liken you, I will compare you to a man who digs deep. Now listen, I don't know. Has anybody in the house ever dug a ditch before? Oh my Lord, you ain't never worked until you dug a ditch. Let me, let me just tell you, I, it, was, uh, uh, it was back in the summer of, of 2007, and we were working on the venue, the student building out there, and we needed power to the student building. And the, 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 uh, the regulations say that you got to dig 36 inches deep to put that kind of power in the ground. We were bringing 240, am I saying it right, Don, 240 into the the building and this two-phase electricity. I mean, we're talking some power into that little building. And we were, we were bringing that line in and, and everybody was working. Everybody was trying to make this thing happen. And I went down and, and, and rented a ditch, uh, a ditch witch. I don't know why they call it a witch. But anyway, it was a ditch witch. I, I, had, a, I had a few witch in our names for it. I'm telling you, I was, I was ticked. It was hot. It was 542 degrees outside in the summer of 2000. And seven and and uh, man I would dig and and then I'd get in places where I couldn't use the ditch witch and and uh, I, I would get down in the hole with a shovel uh, and, and let me tell you something this old black gumbo here is tough and uh, so I, I literally thought I, I was gonna have a stroke I mean it, it was uh, uh, it was so hot and it was the hardest uh, I believe I'd ever worked in my life uh, and I dug deep uh, and yeah it's a little like that. Jesus said, if you hear what I tell you to do and you do it, I will liken it to hard work. I will, I will tell you that it's going to be difficult. I will tell you that there are going to be some huge decisions that you, make, you have to make. Uh, I will tell you that it's going to be very difficult to, to dig down and get down to the bedrock uh, and build the foundation. But let me tell you, the second part of that is I've been doing this so long. Uh, and the number one thing uh, that I can tell you uh, is that I have watched the crumbling of families because they wanted forgiveness but they did not want obedience they wanted to receive forgiveness but they did not want to follow after God and do things his way they wanted heaven as their home but they were really comfortable in this one oh come on now And I, family after family after family, I've watched their lives crumble because they halfway followed God. Mm. He said, the one that obeys me, the one that hears and does what I say is like the one that builds on an un- Shakeable. And listen, read my lips. Unshakable. Unshakable. No matter what comes our way. Listen, I I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little difficult here. If we refuse his kingship, his lordship. Our house will crumble. If we refuse his kingship, his lordship. See, because here's the difference. Here's the thing. You can love him with your heart, but still refuse to love him with your soul. Oh, come on now. Oh, I love him. <laughs> show me. Come on now. I love him. Well, show me. I love, show him. We can love him with our heart and still not be loving him with our soul because we won't let him be Lord and we won't let him be king. Remember that in this passage of scripture, he says, 
you and I are the builder. He provides the, the blueprint. He provides the material, right? He, he provides all of the instruction. He paid, for the, he paid for the new house. And he says, now, now build the house correctly. Come follow me. Let's work together and build the house. But you're, you and I are the builder of the house. This, I'll make some of you mad at me here, but it's okay. God cannot, I'm going to tell you something God cannot do. God cannot help those that won't obey him. Because God cannot go against his word. Oh, man. Come on now. He cannot help those. And, and you know, we, we get in the midst of all of our trials and all of our valleys. And, and all, you know, we get the, the, the stream breaks forth on the house, like, like the scripture says, right? And, and uh, all of a sudden, the crisis comes. And, uh, and we're like, oh, God, it's so bad. And he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> and? Come on now. God cannot bail out those that will not walk in obedience to him. Loving God with our heart is not always loving God with all of our soul. Because so many of us are so proud and arrogant. <clears throat> That's the root of disobedience and rebellion, right? Is that pride and that arrogance of I know what's best. I know I want what I want. I think what I think. And listen, either, either we think that our way is better or we will never get caught. Isn't that the dumbest thing ever? Oh, nobody knows what I'm doing. I'll never get caught. You know, so either our way's better or, or we think we'll never get caught or, or, you know, God didn't really mean that. So what we're really doing is saying, well, God lies sometimes. God opposes. He resists the proud. But he gives more grace to the humble. Jesus says, why don't you do what I say? King number two. King number two is a, is a heathen king. His, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the king uh, of the Babylonian Empire. And uh, we, we know the story of Daniel. You know, Daniel in the lion's den. The same Daniel. Um, uh, the king called him Belshazzar. But, uh, but his Hebrew name, his name was Daniel. And... Uh, but, but King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Babylonian kingdom was, was enormous. It was the greatest kingdom that was on planet earth at the time. And the, the Jewish people had rebelled against God and, and they were under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. And one night, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And uh, uh, the, the scripture says that he, he called all of his soothsayers, he called all of his mystics, his magicians together because he was so troubled by this dream. And he was trying to get someone to interpret the dream. And, and they couldn't. And so he, he calls Daniel and he says, Daniel! Please reveal to me what this dream means. And, and he began to tell him the dream. And he said, I saw this enormous tree. And uh, the tree was so enormous. had beautiful leaves. And, and it had fruit that, that uh, uh, was all over it. And the birds of the trees were in it. And the, the beasts of the field were underneath the tree in the shade. And, and he said, but all of a sudden I saw the, the tree was cut down to the... Uh, it was cut down to the stub. It was cut down and the, the roots were left in the ground and, and uh, he said I, I just don't understand I don't know what this means can you tell me and so, so Daniel uh, he can tell Daniel struggling and, and he's saying Daniel please tell me and Daniel is you know I'm sure Daniel's wondering if his head's going to get cut off if he tells uh, uh, if he tells the king what it really means and he, he finally looks at the king and says oh king uh, may this interpretation be for your enemies and not for you right? And 
and he said, oh, king, listen. He said, your kingdom is so great. Your kingdom is so wonderful. It's so massive. Um, he said, you're the tree, oh, king. And he said, your leaves are beautiful. And, and uh, he said, the, the fruit from your tree, it feeds everyone. And he said, the fowls of the air, they come and they rest uh, in your tree. And, the, and your tree, you, you provide shade for all of the wild beasts of the land. And, and uh, he said, you're the tree, O king. He said, but there is a watcher from heaven. And uh, he came down and he cut down the tree. And he left the stump and he left the root. Um, he said, but then you were driven out and you were under the dew of heaven for seven seasons. And this is what the scripture says. This is mm, verse 29 says, at the end of 12 months, he had the dream. He had the interpretation of the dream. And 12 months later, this is what happened. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is it not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty? Hmm. While the words were still coming out of his mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like the ox, and the uh, seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word, uh, uh, the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from among men uh, and ate grass like an ox and uh, his body uh, was wet with the dew of heaven till the hair grew as long uh, as eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird's claws. Verse 34 says this, um, at the end of the days, I Nebuchadnezzar and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures for generation to generation. And then jump down to 36, and he said, At the same time, my reason returned to me, and the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my Lord sought me and I was established in my kingdom and still uh, more greatness was added to me. Uh, now I Nebuchadnezzar praise and extol the uh, and honor the king of heaven uh, for all his works are right uh, and his ways are just and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Listen, man, I, I, I want you to know there's, there's a piece that I know I just read a lot of scripture and some of you were off in space somewhere. Come back. Listen, I, I, I am amazed at this passage of scripture. We have the greatest king that's on the earth at the time. And he is puffed up and this is my kingdom. This is what I've accomplished. This is what I can do. And God brought him down. But what is beautiful about this passage of scripture is I love that the, the, the dream that he had, the, the prophetic dream that he had was that the one, the watcher from heaven that came down to earth to humble him left the stump in the roots. Mm, Y'all didn't get that. Listen, God loves us, but God won't leave us in pride. How can we love God? To surrender our soul, 
to surrender our will to him. And the scripture says uh, that he humbled Nebuchadnezzar, uh, but the beautiful thing was uh, that he was able to cut uh, off and leave the stump and leave the root. So at the moment uh, that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, bowed his knee uh, and said, I, I'm no, I, I no longer see myself uh, as the one in charge. I no longer see myself uh, as the one that's high and lifted up, uh, but I worship the king of heaven, uh, the one that gives glory to whom he will give glory. Uh, and he says, uh, uh, he says here then, uh, my kingdom was restored to me uh, even greater than it was before uh, because uh, the God of heaven uh, that loves us uh, is able to leave the stump and the root in the ground uh, so that when we humble, he is able to bless. Mm. King Nebuchadnezzar said, those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. We've talked about King Jesus and we've talked about the heathen king. But let's talk about the king of Judah, Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a young man when he came in to be the king, 25 years old, was sworn in to be the king of Judah. And the scripture talks about how he loved God, how he honored God. Scripture tells us that he came in at a rebellious time in Israel's history. And it says that he recognized that they were not even recognizing the feast of Passover. And so he began to call out to the nations. He began to call out to the tribes. He wrote a parchment and he sent it out with couriers all over the countryside to, to every one of the tribes. And he said, uh, come back. Uh, let's humble ourselves. Uh, let's begin to recognize. Let's keep the feast uh, as the Lord commanded through Moses. Let's honor God again. Verse 8. He said, do not now. I, here's a word for you. Do not now be stiff-necked. <clears throat> Anybody ever been stiff-necked before? All liars go to hell. <laughs> Anybody ever been stiff-necked before? Do not be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord. See, Nebuchadnezzar said, do not be stubborn. And number three our, says, do not be stubborn, but rather yield yourselves to the Lord. And come to his sanctuary, which he has consecrated forever. And serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger be turned away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you. If you return to him. So the couriers went out from the city to city. Through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn. And mocked them. However, verse 11 says. Some men of Asher and Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves. And came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them a heart. To do what the king and the princes commanded them. By the word of the Lord. And many people came together in Jerusalem. To keep the feast of unleavened bread. In the second month. The very great assembly. And they set to work. And removed the altars. That were in Jerusalem and all the altars for burning incense. And they took away and threw them into the brook Kidron. This king of Judah says, don't be stiff-necked like your father. Don't be, in other words, stop being stubborn. Stop digging your heels in. Stop making it. 
your life's ambition to get your own way. Listen, this is just where the rubber meets the road to get today, guys. By nature, man is stubborn, stiff-necked, and rebellious. Stubborn, stiff-necked, and rebellious. Listen, the, the proverb says this. Wisdom cries aloud from the street and markets. She raises her voice in the head, um, at the head of the noisy street. She cries out at the entrance of the city gate. She speaks, how long, O oh simple ones? Will you love being simple? How long will you scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Remember, the scripture says that we are to love God with all of our heart. With all of our soul. So listen, lock into this sentence. The greatest display of love that we can give to God is to render back to him what he has left in our control. Wait, let me say it again. The greatest display of love that we can offer to God is to render back to him what he has left in our control. To love him with all of... Thank you. To love him with all of our... To surrender to him what he was gracious enough not to take from us. What a thought process that is. Loving God with our heart doesn't always equate to loving God with all of our soul. Hezekiah said, don't be stubborn or stiff-necked, but rather yield yourselves to the Lord. I'm closing. He said he resists the proud, but he gives more grace. More grace, more grace to the humble. When we surrender ourselves to him, he gives more grace. Listen, is your house crumbling? Is your life crumbling? Wait, 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 wait. Maybe, maybe you're just in that building process and you're going, dude! It's really hot right now. It's really tough right now. It's 542 degrees out here, Pastor. It's really difficult. You know what? Making my flesh bow down to his lordship is really hard work. But I can promise you That if you will listen to the words that he speaks and obey and follow him and humble yourself, I can promise you the flood's going to come. But I can promise you that if you're one of the ones that dig deep and humble yourself, your life's going to stand. Your marriage is going to stand. Your children are going to stand. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? See, we, we Pentecostal people. <gasps> Some of you didn't know you were in a Pentecostal church. Oh, crud. <laughs> we Pentecostal people like to quote that scripture out of 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter. We love it. If my people who are called by my name will to themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. 
I'll heal their limb. We love to quote that scripture. We love to quote that scripture in context with how important it is to pray. However, there's a prerequisite that precedes the prayer. If my people will humble themselves. The prayer is important but ineffective if I still think I'm the boss. Ooh, boom, man, come on. The prayer has lost its power because God's people have lost their humility. As long as I'm in charge, as long as I'm the boss, as long as I'm doing things my way instead of his way, he cannot come to my aid. He will not come to my aid. But the moment, the moment that Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses and he said oh my God I'm nobody he's the God that rules over man and does what he will and raises who he will raise the moment that we surrender and say okay God I'm going to stop doing it my way. I'm going to stop being stiff-necked and stubborn. I'm going to stop hearing what I should do and doing what I want to do. The moment that the light switch goes on and surrender happens, supernatural things A supernatural journey like you've never known. When you show him your greatest love, not by lip service. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go a step further. Not just by lip service, but not by feeling. Oh, I feel like I love God. Oh, really? Try that with your spouse. I feel like a love. They they don't know it because we're not loving them in their love language like we know they need to be loved. But at the moment when we do more than lip service, more than feeling, but we actually start walking in the Word of God. We start walking out our faith. We start surrendering to what we know his precepts are. We start following the voice of God. At that moment, stubby going to start growing branches. Y'all didn't get that. The stump going to start growing again, y'all. The stump, the root in the ground. Start producing fruit again, producing life again because you're walking in the blessing because He gives more grace. He gives more grace. He gives more grace. He gives more grace. He gives more grace grace to the humble. Just stand to your feet with me this morning. Charles, would you? Go to this side of the building with the elements. And Clint, would you go to this side and take the elements? And you guys stand here. And there's some elements in the back in just a moment. If you're watching online, we're about to receive communion. So go get some elements in your house. Get whatever you have. 
receive communion with us. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come and find a place to pray. I want you to come and take one of these communion packets and just go and find a place to get alone with God. And say, God, where is it that I'm operating in pride? Where is it that I need to humble myself? Where is it that I need to surrender and submit and let you be king in my life? I want you just to spend some time. Say, I I don't believe that we take communion lightly. I believe it's a very valuable, important thing according to the scripture that we consider our hearts and consider ourselves. So I want you just to take some elements, find a place to pray, and in a moment, I'll give some instruction and we'll pray together and we'll all receive communion together so right now would you just go and find one of these stations they're in the four corners of the sanctuary just go and find one of those take one of those elements and come to the altars come and find a place to get alone with God this morning morning if you'd be honest in the house and say you know what the Holy Spirit is dealing with me about kingdoms in my heart that I need to surrender just right where you are would you be honest enough would you be man or woman enough just to slip your hands up and say that I believe that the Holy Spirit is continuing to deal with me on the topic of surrender yes 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 God bless you God bless you yeah 
Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to ask you guys if you'd raise the house lights just a little. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in the house and you'd say, Pastor, I don't currently have a relationship an active relationship with Jesus Christ. Whatever reason that is, maybe you've never known Him. Maybe you're like the prodigal son who bought into the lie that it would be better on the other side of the fence. The grass was greener. And you turned and walked away. For whatever reason, life happened. But today, in either case, the Father is standing in anticipation, waiting on you to come home. Waiting on you. At this very moment, He's calling you. If you're in the house today and you'd say, I need to surrender my life to Christ. I need to make heaven my home. I need that forgiveness. I'm at the end of my rope. I've tried everything. I can't fix myself. I need God. If that's you in this house this morning with no one looking around, right where you are, if you just slip your hand up and right back down, yes, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Anyone else this morning, slip it up. Slip it up and back down. Thank you. Slip it up and right back down. Thank you. God bless you. Is there another in the house? Church could... It's, it's so important that we get the heart of man right before we receive the elements of communion. Would you just pray this prayer with me today? All across the building. Heavenly Father... We come in Jesus' name. We believe that He's your Son. And He is your plan of salvation. You sent Him from heaven to earth to pay my debt of sin. And because He died in my place and rose again, not only are my sins forgiven, but I have eternal life now. And I am adopted. And today, you have written my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I am your child. And I am saved in Jesus' name. Mm. Guys, would you take the elements in your hand today? Fathers, we hold the wafer this morning. Father, all the punishment that we deserved, Jesus received in his body. The beatings, Lord, the broken body, he stepped in and took our punishment. And today, we receive this wafer to identify with the punishment that Jesus received in our place. We remember, we remember what he has done for us. Would you take the wafer this morning? Lord, as we hold This simple cup of juice. 
It was no simple thing that Jesus did for us. Father, we acknowledge today that not only did he receive our punishment, but he poured out his blood on the mercy seat to pay the price of our rebellion and to bring us back into right standing with you and to pay for our adoption in full. Lord, today our forgiveness has been bought and paid for by the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. And today we remember what Jesus paid in our stead. Would you receive the cup this morning? All over this building, would you just stand and just take a moment and just thank Him? Would you just worship Him this morning? Just remember. Remember what He's done for us. And let's just take a moment to thank Him for that. Lord, we thank You. Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful, Lord. We're grateful. We're a grateful people, God. Thank you for what you did for us. And we could not do for ourselves. We thank you for that today. We thank you for that today, Lord. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for right standing. Thank you that you have adopted us and written our names in heaven given us new life, God. We thank you for it today. Thank you for it today. Man. Man, I love worshiping with you guys. I love hanging out with you. It's an amazing thing to do life together, amen? I want to ask this morning, if you slipped up your hand and said, hey, I want to follow Christ today. I want to make things right with him. I'm, I'm going to ask you, we have a, a gift for you today. And we have a wall over here that we celebrate. We, we, we just have fun. People signing the wall saying, yes, I will follow Jesus. And listen, would you do me the honor of coming and signing the wall? Would you do that? Come on, man. Come on, guys. You, come on, come on, come on. If you raised your hand this morning, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's celebrate, guys. Let's celebrate. There's something about it. Something about it, man. Listen, I love you. God bless you. You are dismiss this morning.